Most people spend a large part of their lives feeling invisible. Whether this is at work, at school, in relationships, roughly two-thirds of people report feeling underappreciated by those around them. And the most common complaint that the people who feel underappreciated have is the belief that other people don't realize how hard they are working and how much they are contributing. If this is how you feel, today's video is for you. Because this is a very damaging and insidious feeling because, as we've discussed on here before, human beings are reward-based mammals. I know that sounds like a pretty unflattering description. All it really means is that we don't like to do something for nothing. Most of us would not keep going to work, for example, if we knew we weren't going to get paid. Or wouldn't go to school if they told us, hey, you're not going to get a degree when you're done with this. We engage in behaviors to try to achieve certain outcomes. And in our relationships, whether that's romantic, friends, family, our reward is appreciation. We need other people to see the hard work we're putting in and to communicate to us that they see it. When that doesn't happen, we feel like we're not getting, quote, paid for our hard work and our motivation to keep working rapidly begins to drop. If a pattern like this goes unchecked for years or even decades, it can absolutely break a person down because it feels like you're throwing your time, your energy, and your effort into a void that gives nothing back. And eventually, it can feel like this void makes a home inside of you. And life itself starts to feel kind of pointless and thankless. And you find yourself asking questions like, why should I even bother waking up today? Or why should I work so hard if no one cares about what I do and it's not helping anybody? And this is a really difficult problem to solve because unlike a lot of what we discuss on here, it isn't just about you. Relationships and communication challenges are some of the most difficult issues to address in therapy because reaching resolution also requires the participation of others. You cannot fix a relationship you're in by yourself. But there are things you can do to resolve this feeling, even if nobody around you is willing to change or work on themselves. This chronic feeling of being underappreciated that most of us are walking around with every day comes from a feedback loop based on incorrect assumptions and distorted thoughts. So first, you need to understand that things are not as one-sided as they seem. Now don't hear what I'm not saying. I almost certainly don't know you or your relationships. I'm not saying your feelings are wrong, but you really might be the hardest person, the hardest working person in your own life. I'm just saying that the gap might not be as wide as you think it is because there are certain mental glitches that all human beings have that cause us to misread things. And the, our perception of the amount of effort we put in compared to our perception of the amount of effort other people put in is one of those mental glitches. Let me give you a few scientific references to explain what I mean. 75% of people who live with someone else believe that they work harder on managing the home than the people that they live with. Obviously, the math doesn't work out on that one. It's kind of like the statistic that 80% of people believe they're above average drivers. It, it's impossible. When participants in group projects are surveyed on what percentage of the final product they feel like they contributed to, and you add up all the numbers, they always add up over 100%. So what this data tells us is that human beings have a tendency to either overestimate our workload, underestimate the workload of others, or maybe even both to some degree. All human beings, no matter how hard we try not to, have some degree of egocentrism. That doesn't mean you're narcissistic or self-centered or full of yourself. All it means is you have more data on yourself than you do on other people, which makes perfect sense, right? Think about it. You know everything you did today. Of course you did. You were there for all of it. The people around you, don't know everything you did today. They were only there for a fraction of it. And adding to that, a lot of the work you do is invisible. So even if someone followed you around all day, took notes on everything you did, that person would still dramatically underestimate how hard you worked that day because they could only record what they saw, observable behavior. They didn't see all the moments you had to hold in your tears. They didn't see all the times you wanted to just go home and crawl back into bed, but you fought back and kept going. Those moments are invisible to everyone except you. So of course they don't know how hard you work. They never will. And you will never know how hard they work. We will always be more aware of our personal workload than the workload of others. It's just how our brains work. That's why almost all of us are walking around with this chronic belief that life is particularly difficult for us specifically. So again, I'm not saying that the gap between your effort and their effort doesn't exist. I am just saying it's probably not as wide as it looks. You probably aren't as alone as you feel, and it's important to keep that in mind. 
That being said, that gap is still pretty big, even accounting for our inherent bias and egocentrism in some cases. If there is a big gap between how hard you're working and how appreciated you feel, and if you want to work on closing that gap, you basically have three options, and you may need to do some combination of all three to get where you want. Option one, you can try to make the appreciation you receive match the effort you're putting in by requesting more appreciation, by letting people around you know, here's what I'm doing, I want this to mean something to you. This is what most people start with. In my experience, it doesn't work real well because even if people around you have the best of intentions and they listen and they understand and they're like, yes, I know I need to appreciate you more. Again, they don't see most of it and they've got their own work to do. We could all do a better job of letting one another know what we see and how much we appreciate it. But in my experience, this alone almost never closes that gap. Option two, you can reduce the amount of effort you're putting in to make it match the appreciation you're getting. Sometimes we're working harder than we need to or working on tasks that people around us don't value as much as we do. If either of these things are happening, it is going to widen your perception of that gap. So if you're working yourself to your absolute breaking point every day and expecting your friends and family to treat you like a dragon slaying conqueror for it, that's not going to happen. If you're a workaholic or a perfectionist, you're always going to feel underappreciated because you're trying to live up to standards or expectations that other people don't have for you. It isn't fair to other people in your life to expect them to appreciate you for things they don't understand or don't care about. And it can build resentment that is completely unnecessary. This is something I struggled with early on in my marriage because something, if you've ever taken the five love languages quiz, it is an interesting quiz, especially if you're in a romantic relationship. It tells you how you give and receive love, basically, because it, we can vary dramatically from one person to the next in, in how we communicate our feelings and our affection. I am a big acts of service person, so when I want someone to know, hey, I know you're working really hard and I appreciate that, rather than just saying those words to that person, which for whatever reason I don't do very often, I try to do stuff for that person. So in the first year of my marriage, I was in school and my wife was, actually it's the first four years of my marriage, I was in school um, and my wife was working and she didn't love her job, but we needed her to have a job because I had no income or very little income. So I wanted her to know how much that meant to me. And many days I would get home before her because my class schedule sometimes ended at you know 2 or 3 p.m. She's still at work. So I'd get home and I'd cook and I'd clean and I'd organize. And that was my way of saying to her, hey, thanks for working so hard. I'm going to make sure everything's done when you get home so you don't have to do stuff. But that's not something that is as important to her as it is to me. She's more of a quality time and words of affirmation person. So when she got home, she just wanted to like spend time with me and hang out with me and maybe cuddle on the couch and watch TV. And suddenly she get home and I'm still cooking and I'm still cleaning. And I'm like, hold on, before I do the thing you actually want to do, that is what you really want from me to feel appreciated, let me do this thing for you that isn't actually that important to you so you know that I'm appreciating you. So it's important to make sure that your efforts are going to things that actually matter to the person that you're giving them to. If you're doing things for them that aren't actually that important to them, or at least aren't as important to them as they are to you, and then expecting to be fully appreciated for that, it's probably not gonna happen. And it's not necessarily because that person is a jerk or doesn't appreciate you or doesn't care about you. It's because you're speaking two different languages. It's because you're showing your feelings in ways that don't, that don't sync up. So the third option for closing that gap is you can fill in the gap by being more appreciative of yourself. Most of us do a very poor job of this and then we ironically expect other people around us to pick up the slack. It's not their job. The more you minimize and invalidate your own hard work, the more appreciation you're going to feel like you need from other people. Because you're basically creating a black hole inside of yourself and expecting others to fill it. This is your job to a degree. You, you cannot fully delegate the task of appreciating what you do. You have to appreciate yourself for those things. If you spend all day telling yourself, I'm not good enough, I need to do more, I suck, I'm a lazy piece of crap, it is not fair for you to expect other people around you to counter that negative voice in your head 24 seven. That is not their job, that is your job. So if you're one of the people who feels chronically underappreciated, what I want you to consider doing is first, realize that the gap between what you think you do and what you think other people do 
probably is not as wide as you think it is because of the inherent egocentrism that we all have as people. But if even accommodating for that, you still feel like there's a gap there and that gap needs to be addressed for your relationships to be moving in a healthy direction and to avoid you ending up in patterns of resentment, which can absolutely sink relationships of all kinds. Make sure that you ask for what you need. You won't always get it, but it is important to let people know if, like, if you're feeling just 100% invisible and you feel like the people around you do not care at all, like, you probably should let people know you're feeling that way. They may not realize you're feeling that way. And they, in my opinion, deserve the right or deserve the chance, maybe I should say, to let you know. Rather than you just like passive aggressively festering with that feeling, you got to tell people. You got to at least give them a chance to do right by you. Also, don't be wasting your time and energy on things that only you care about. Well, I shouldn't say that. Like, it's not necessarily a waste, but if you do it because you want something from them, then it is a waste. If you have higher standards for yourself than other people have for you, and you bust your butt living up to your own standards and then expect people around you to say you are so awesome thank you so much for doing that those aren't necessarily their standards for you if you have depression or anxiety in particular like very very good odds that you have crazy high probably unrealistic standards for yourself you are working yourself to the bone every single day to try to live up to them and then not feeling like other people see it well, yet they they don't expect you to do that probably so think about where your efforts are actually going. And if you want your efforts to be appreciated by others, you have to make sure they're going to things that other people value and not things that only you value. And again, the last, and I think probably most important one, is for you to see it. If you are just this bottomless pit of self-deprecation and invalidation and perfectionism and every single thing you do, you're like, this was not enough. And then you want other people to say, no, it was, you did good. It's, it's all in your head. That's not gonna happen. Not consistently anyway, not all the time, not as often as you need it to happen, not every day. That's your job. Other people are not responsible for correcting the maladaptive belief systems inside your own mind. That's work that only you can do. Do not outsource it, do not delegate it, do that work internally. As always, I hope this helps. I hope you consider subscribing, liking, leaving a comment, and I'd be happy to see you here again. Take care.